And oh, I got to tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. Everything down to the last minute details. There was no way that I was not going to do a movie review of Dune Part 2 for the spectacle that I witnessed last night on IMAX. No joke, this movie and its execution reminded me of the big screen experiences I had as a kid with Lord of the Rings the Two Towers or even the re-release of Empire Strikes Back. This is a rarity at a time where big production companies are mostly focusing on quantity over quality and more importantly where there is a dearth of creators like Denis Villeneuve who is loyal to the source material that not only has a huge fan base but is very difficult to adapt for the big screen experience. Frank Herbert's Dune is no joke, and while David Lynch attempted the adaptation in 1984, it was nothing short of production hell, transforming into a guilty pleasure for audiences more than anything else. We find Paul in Dune Part 2 accompanied with his mother Lady Jessica, assimilating with the Fremen as the house of Atreides has been completely wiped out by the Harkonnen, under the orders of the Imperium. Many elements of the Fremen consider Paul to be the chosen one, who leads them to a brighter tomorrow. His growing relationship with Chani and the duality that exists within him between the acceptance of the prophecy and just doing the right thing for the sake of Arrakis is the core conflict of Part 2, leading up to possibly the most brutal war between the two conflicting houses as the ultimate power of the Imperium becomes even more vulnerable. What I love about Dune Part 2 is that as the running minutes pass by, you quickly realized how important it was to split the narrative into two, as there was so much exposition in the first part. Its sole intention almost became in familiarizing you with the world, its characters and the relationships they share. Everything from spice and the importance of it for space travel, the medieval-like warring tactics employed while still being set in the year 10,000, the Bene Gesserit and their influence, the existence of sandworms in the world, and what essentially gets triggered for Paul as he gets exposed to Spice, specifically due to his genetic heritage, was all essentially set up in the first half. This allows for part 2 to flourish, as we know the context and rules of this world from the word go, especially those who are not well versed with the source material. So if you ask, yes, it's absolutely necessary that you watch the first part if you truly want to love this film. You will be in absolute awe of the cinematography by Greg Frazier, and if you have the luxury of an IMAX screen near you, I could not implore you further to watch it there, for its expanse is something to marvel at on the big screen. While Denis Villeneuve emphasizes on close-up shots as characters interact with one another, really honing in on their emotional turmoil in dialogues, it is the wide shots and the inconspicuous CGI that will really make your jaw drop. The expanse of Arrakis and just the number of elements that seem like ants in the frames is truly to marvel at. The more you learn about Denis Villeneuve, you'll realize he's adamant to work with as many practical effects as possible. And this is what makes the essential difference in making every moving element so believable. So whether it's the miniature explosions in the backdrop, rigs actually created for the riding of the sandworms, so that you feel the exhilaration, or one of my favorites, the overhead shots of the Fremen that mark the entry of Paul. It is nothing short of masterful. Despite a 2 hour and 48 minute running time, never in the slightest did I feel that there was a sense of lethargy that was creeping in. This was something that many people complained in the first part about, and I owe it to just the extent of exposition that was required to cover such a dense work of fiction. Part 2 is devoid of the same, and you organically see the Fremen warming up to Paul, and never in the slightest does the relationship between him and Chani seem forced. It sets the building blocks of a friendship and trust that eventually develops a relationship of star-crossed lovers, both Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet sharing great chemistry with one another. What I love about Dune as a script is that this is not some generic sci-fi thriller, but it has elements of prophecies, religion and magic that make it ominous, slightly scary and at the same time complex and intriguing. This is especially explored as you see the role of the Bene Gesserit and the motive of Lady Jessica getting explored, exceptionally performed by Rebecca Ferguson by the way. You even see how the Harkonnen are designed, it's straight out evil and it lends so much gravitas to the story. From Raba, played by Dave Batista, Stellan Skarsgård as Baron, and the most significant in part 2, Austin Butler playing the role of Faye Drotha, who get an introduction which is super villain shit. It was epic in every way, and the Harkonnen embody everything evil. This is the king shit you look forward to on the big screen, like top tier villain shit, and Austin Butler really did kill it in this film. Hans Zimmer still having the ability to give us goosebumps is true for part 2 as well. The moments 
Once where his score kicks in, it truly makes the event that is Dune Part 2 this weekend worth every penny. What's insane about this film is that Timothy Chalamet from a physical point of view is a lanky fellow, but the staging, his performance and the score of Hans Zimmer creates this atmosphere where Paul, even as he is the only one in the frame, has the ability to intimidate making the Harkonnen also turn their backs in fear. While Zendaya acts as a great supporting character as Chani, coming to terms with her feelings for Paul and her loyalties towards the Fremen, I was really impressed by Timothy Chalamet, a boy essentially leading an army. The moments of anguish followed by bursts of anger really do make you feel this kid is supremely talented. Dude just did Willy Wonka a few months ago, just the contrast is insane to see. His immediate reaction to the Bene Gesserit commanding him to be cautious and him shouting silence really left me with goosebumps. The film and its final act reaches a point where you are simply in awe of its frames. The scale, the vision of this director and how he seamlessly has integrated so many complex elements in a bona fide commercial sci-fi blockbuster full of mass moments, yet having style as well as substance. The growing influence of Paul, the acceptance of this ascendancy, and what follows ahead made me emotional, for these are the big scale risks we look forward to, and trust Denis Villeneuve to deliver one of the best sequels I have seen in a long time. It's still just the start of the year, and this may be in many people's top 5 of the year already. And that was the video guys. Write down in the comments below what you thought about Dune Part 2. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the handle's right in front of you, follow me at jammypants4. Also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.